Hey Squarespacer, this is going to be a beginning level tutorial about adding custom CSS to your Squarespace website. There are four different ways and four different places that we can add CSS. I'm going to go over all four of those and the differences that you need to know between all four of those. And then we're going to go through a couple examples so I can show you what options might be best for you in any given circumstance. So let's jump into that right now. So what is CSS? Well, CSS is one of three main programming languages that comprise of the entire internet. The other two are HTML and JavaScript. So what are those three? The first is HTML, and this is sort of the core of every single website on the internet. This is HTML right here, and I have this image element, a button element, and it's all within this other div element. If those words don't make any sense to you, that's totally fine. And you can see the output of these three HTML elements on my page right now. This is actually an image, but it's showing the entire, it's like this whole plate, page is scrolling, it's some massive image. So the HTML puts the content onto the page, and you can also see we have this nice little, this button down here, right here, that button with the hide in the middle, that's what this is. But you click on it and nothing happens. So let's make this a little bit prettier. That's what CSS does. CSS is the design language of the internet. So here is some CSS right here. I'm going to uncomment it out. We'll talk about adding comments as well in our lesson today. And you can see now with that this, this styling language, CSS means cascading style sheets. So this is the styling language of our website. We're selecting these elements up here with our CSS and applying properties and values to them. And so you see this is styled a lot nicer right now. So now we have something, but I hit this button, nothing is happening. And that's what JavaScript does. JavaScript is just a little bit more. It adds some extra functionality to our website. Same thing with Squarespace. If there's some extra functionality, you can see I, I can toggle it and show it and hide it. If in our Squarespace website, if we want to add some extra functionality, we might want to be using JavaScript. If we want to change the design and styles, we probably want to be using CSS. And if we want to just add more elements or more content onto the page, we either use the Squarespace blocks or we can just write simple HTML. So that does it. So today we're focusing on this part right here, just our custom CSS. And then we're going to talk about, well, how, where do we put this into the website? All right, so where do we put CSS into our Squarespace website? So I've created a totally blank new template right here in Squarespace 7.1. So there are four ways that we can do this. The first is our custom CSS area, and this one is distinct and different from the rest. So custom CSS. The other three are our page header code injection area, our site header code injection area, and just a code block. So let's take those one by one. Custom CSS area. So you might have some code, you may have found some code on the internet, you may have been given it to, you may have purchased some, whatever it is, let's pretend like this code right here is what you got. And what this does is it adds a shadow, it sort of acts a, adds a box shadow to all of our image blocks. So I'm going to hit this copy button, we're going to go back to our demo site, I'm going to go to design, custom CSS, paste that in right there. And now let's find an image block and you can see it's working. So we have this box shadow, it's five pixels to the right, five pixels down, and then the color is red. So, and we're doing that with these three elements. So what we're doing is selecting the element and then applying this property and value to it. And you can change these if you want. All right, so this is great. We have our code in there, it works, we can see it, it's right there, that's fantastic. Well, here's the problem with this. If we have a bunch of customizations on our website, if we have a bunch of CSS, it's gonna be really hard to look at this as we're scrolling through this field right here, this box, and see and know exactly what code applies to what. So let's add some comments. There are two types of comments we can use. First is a single line comment, and that is exactly what you think. Two backslashes, this is a comment, right there, and then next line, this has to be good syntax. See, it's not working, it's got disabled. This this is not, we're not writing in CSS uh, valid syntax right here, and so it's, it's gonna break our CSS. So a single line comment only applies to that one line. If we want a multi-line comment, we can use our backslash and then an asterisk, and then that'll comment out everything else below it until we put another asterisk and backslash. So there we go, these two lines, this is a multi-line comment. 
So what's best practice to use? Well, I usually like to do a multi-line comment to indicate what the, the entire code group is. So I'll say uh, box shadow to image. And then for each one of these, I'll specify kind of specifically what it's referring to with a single line comment. So this is going to be for, uh, this is the image blocks, and then this is going to be for the collection, collection item. So you get the idea. So we can put in our own little mini comments within this. So this is how I break it up. This big one right here with a multi-line comment, that way we can go to new lines if we need to. And then a single line comment with indicating what each one of these CSS rules is applying to. All right, the next place we can add CSS, let's delete it from here. I'm gonna cut all of that with the comments, is our page header code injection area. So I'm gonna go back here, gonna go to pages. On our home page, I'm gonna hit this gear icon and bring up advanced. And you'll see we have this page header code injection area. I'm going to hit style and then paste it in. First, notice this is a premium feature. We have to be able to use, uh, we're need be on a business plan or commerce plan for this to work. So first note that. Second, note how I pasted this in. I put in style tags. So since this is CSS, we can't just paste in this code because this, anything we put in here, has to be read by the browser as HTML. The browser's gonna think this is just, we're putting more content onto the page. If I hit save, we scroll back to the top, you see it just thinks we're, this is just text. It's gonna immediately turn this into text. So we need to tell the browser, no, this is actually CSS. So I'm gonna go back into our advanced custom or page header code injection and I'm going to wrap all of this in style tags. These style tags say, browser, anything between these two, let's read it as CSS. So I'm gonna cut that out, paste it right there, and then hit save. So, you notice it's not working. And it's not working because our comments are a little bit different in, right, in our, our page header code injection areas. So you see that it's red, that's kind of an indicator something's bad. So we're gonna get rid of all these. Multi-line comments are the only ones that can work within our style tags right here. So I might just do another multi-line right there and just say uh, image blocks, whatever. So here is another thing. So inside our style tags, we have to use a multi-line comment like this. Outside of our style tags, we need to use an HTML comment. So now we have three different comments that we have comment types that we have tried. So it's an open bracket, exclamation point, dash dash, and then dash dash, closing bracket. So anything in between here, this is an HTML comment. So this is an HTML comment, not gonna be read by the browser. This is a CSS comment, not gonna be read by the browser. No, no backslash comments are allowed in this page header code injection area. Here's my dog. Hey, hey, stop it. So the final two places where we could put code is in the code block or the site header code injection area. But I don't really recommend either of two these two options. I'll just show you though. We're gonna cut it out of there, save. We're gonna go back home. So let's go to settings, then advanced, and then code injection right there. And you can see I've already pasted it in right there. So again, this has to be read as HTML. So we need our style tags here, right there and right there. You don't have to, you don't have to put it in both. I'll just save it in one. This is going to be placed, this is exactly like our page header code injection, but it's placed in the header of every single page on our website. So this serves the exact function as, as our custom CSS area, except we don't get as many syn syntax advantages, we don't get to use less. It's, I, I don't really prefer this method because I like to keep this area for custom scripts, uh, JavaScript and stuff, and it also keeps all of my global CSS because this is this is global, it's gonna be put on every single page. I like to keep, keep all of my global CSS in the custom CSS area. And then finally, the last place is just within a code block. So I'm just gonna throw in a code block right here. I'm gonna add a new block code and just paste it in right there. Again, 
anything put directly onto the page that's not in our custom CSS area, we need our style tags because the browser needs to read this as HTML. And so the same thing works. And you see it sort of shows us live what's happening. The reason I don't like this method is because you hit save, done. You see we have first, we just have some extra spacing up here. We don't really know why it's for a block that's not really getting used. Also, it's really hard to go in and find where is the code that's changing this? Where where do I find that? Where do I change that if I don't want it in there anymore? So you have to hit edit and then you gotta sort of hover around until you see an empty code block. So I don't really like using this method either. So where should you put the CSS that you have? Well, ideally your default is gonna be in the page header code injection area, settings advanced. You should put it there between style tags. If you're going to put it on two or more pages, go to your design custom CSS area. That's the next best place to do it. But you don't want to get that place too bloated, so you want to default to here. Also, if you're ever told specifically, I need to put this, you need to put this code in the custom CSS area, there are some things in there that will make sure that, that it won't work if you put it in here. So you need to put it in the custom CSS area. So do that if you have to. And then finally, if you're testing out code, it's a lot easier to test out code if you're doing it specifically in the design custom CSS area. Because as you just paste it in, it's really easy to change and see the effects live on the page. So we can just change that to blue and you'll see. We can add another uh, blur value in there and you'll see that it blurs out a little bit. So you can play around with all of that. I hope this tutorial helps. Let me know if you have any other questions. If you're curious more about CSS, I have have an entire CSS course, just click that Learn CSS tab at the, the top of my website here. You can learn all about CSS, specifically in Squarespace. If you have any other questions, though, about this or anything else, uh, shoot me an email. If, I have, if I'm able to, I would love to respond and get to know you a little bit more. All right, hope you had a good one.